Hey y'all, Kidney Cat here, coming at you with dinner ideas for my favorite time of year, fall. Or autumn if you're fancy. It's always best to stick with seasonal produce and for the best quality and flavor, and fall never disappoints. This video is intended for those with late stage kidney disease like stage 4 or stage 5 and features low sodium, low potassium, and low phosphorus choices. If you're early stage CKD, this video is not for you. I'm going to come out with one for you very soon. And if you don't know what kidney stage you have, talk to your nephrologist about it. Our first meal idea is traditional turkey. I thought I'd get this one out of the way. Look at this romantic turkey picture. Fresh turkey, the kind that you buy and you unthaw it and you cook it yourself, that's the best bet. You want to avoid processed meats. That's meat that has been cooked ahead of time and you just heat it up like ham or turkey ham. I see big spikes in the potassium results of my patients who are eating ham and turkey ham. I know it contains added potassium, added sodium, and yeah, I've even seen them put phosphorus in the ingredients. Try the turkey with some simple stuffing. I mean like old-fashioned white bread, butter, a sweet onion like a yellow onion or a Vidalia onion, some celery, some parsley. Just make sure that you use unsalted butter. And these stuffing or dressing recipes usually call for a broth, but I highly recommend that you check out the broth recipe that I'm going to put in the comments is just onion powder, garlic powder, and ground celery seed in some hot water, and voila, you've got your own broth, sodium-free. And of course, throw a side of low-potassium vegetables like these, these green beans. Skip the salty green bean casserole and just steam it in the microwave or put it in your air fryer with a little oil. The nice thing about eating vegetables when they're in season is their natural flavor is great, you don't really need to add anything to it. Our next meal is perfectly pot roast. When you take that roast and you throw it in a slow cooker or you put it in your pressure cooker, you want to choose vegetables that are going to be able to hold up to that heat. Carrots is a great one. Garlic is good. Shallots or onions and turnips, y'all. I want you guys to avoid potatoes. Even if you took, cook the potato and try to leach some of the potassium out of it, they call it dialyzing a potato. It's still high in potassium. You should avoid it. But these turnips, you can actually treat them just like you would a potato and, and even make mashed potatoes out of it. You peel it off, you peel it, then you, you can cube it, you boil it in water for about 20 minutes, drain it, mash it, Add stuff to it that you would add to your mashed potatoes, like um, you know, unsalted butter, mayonnaise, a little bit of cream cheese maybe, a garlic, onion, black pepper, thyme, whatever you like. Next up is wild rice and carrot stew. You cook some celery, which is a medium potassium vegetable, but you know what? A little bit is going to be okay. You mix that celery, onions, and carrots in a large pot. And then you add some garlic and thyme to it, and you cook that for a hot minute, and add some of that homemade broth that I was talking about, not the packaged kind. Bring it to a boil, turn the heat to low, and simmer it for about 15 minutes. And then you're going to want to add some wild rice that you're cooking separately, and cook that for a little bit, and then you can add something like a rotisserie chicken. You can shred that chicken up and throw it in the stew too. The recipe below includes a little bit of half and half. That is an optional ingredient, but if you want just a little bit more creaminess, go for a little bit of half and half. The next idea comes from Cajun country. It's shrimp etouffee. First, you're gonna make a roux. That's where you take uh, unsalted butter and flour in a big pot and call it a, a Dutch oven. And then you're going to add your low potassium vegetables to it, like your garlic, your onion, um, your green pepper, and a little bit of medium potassium food, like your celery, or you could use a bell pepper. And you cook those vegetables for about five minutes. And then you throw in your seasoning, like your bay leaf, smoked paprika, red pepper flakes, definitely some cayenne pepper, but definitely not salt. And then you just let that whole thing simmer for about 15 minutes. Then you add your peeled raw shrimp, right? 
Make sure you get the shrimp that is not in the brine or a salty marinade, something like that. It makes a huge difference in the sodium content. And you're going to cook it with that shrimp in there for another five minutes. And then you, you spoon it out over rice. And oh, it's so good. And if you are good about not cooking with salt, feel free to add a few shakes of your favorite hot sauce. All right, what about going back to that turkey? Ground turkey with your favorite seasonings can make a great burger patty. You get that ground turkey meat and you add smoked paprika to it for that maybe a barbecued it taste. I'd also throw some onion and garlic powder in there, not the salt, just the powder. No need to add bread or egg crumbs. It's going to be fine as long as you're cooking it on a pan in your stove. Then instead of putting tomato, avocado, or lettuce on this burger, we're going to be using pan-fried cauliflower or roasted crookneck squash or zucchini. The crookneck squash is low potassium. The zucchini is medium potassium. If you want to know more about potassium, check out my All About Potassium video on my channel. And since Fries are usually high in potassium. Potato, yucca, and sweet potatoes are out the window. But something like kobacha squash is a better option. It's a medium potassium food, and you can make it into fries. It's got a sweet flavor to it. So what you do is you cut this squash into thin slices with the skin and all. You coat it in oil. Don't just drizzle. Actually put it in a bowl and kind of work it around with clean hands. Spread it out on a baking sheet and cook it in the oven at 150 degrees Fahrenheit for about 15 minutes. Then move it to the top rack and broil it for another two to three minutes to get that crispness. And if you don't know how to roast vegetables, I know there are YouTube videos out there. Just when they tell you to add salt, don't do it. Next up couldn't be more easy. It's air fryer eggplant and chicken katsu. That's right. Eggplant is in season in fall, and don't you know, it's low potassium. You're going to want to pick a smaller size eggplant with a green stem because an old eggplant is bitter, y'all. The older, the more bitter we get. <laughs> and because you are not going to be salting these eggplants, because a lot of people, they, they slice their eggplants and they salt them to remove some of the fluid out, right? We're not going to be doing that because we don't want to add extra salt to our eggplant. So your eggplant are going to be a little bit more mushy than um, for somebody else. So in order to get around that, Leave the skin on the eggplant. That's going to give it a little bit of crispiness when you air fry it, and it's going to keep that nice structure. And, of course, you're going to spray down these little eggplant coins with a, a high smoke heat oil that's good for an air fryer. Maybe you're going to sprinkle on some rosemary or garlic powder or whatever. And you cook it for about 15 minutes, turning the coins over halfway. And for the uh, chicken katsu, you take a chicken breast, and you pound it flatter with a mallet, and then you're gonna cut it in half. I cut it diagonally because I'm a little weird, but whatever, you want the pieces to be a little bit smaller. Then you're gonna dip each piece in some whisked, whisk, I can't say it, whisked egg, and then roll it around in some panko breadcrumbs. Spray it with your high heat oil and put it in your air fryer for 20 minutes, turning over about halfway. Let's be real for a second. I've never done an air fryer recipe that came out perfectly. I'll use the same temperature and the same amount of time that it says in the recipe and either it comes out soggy or it comes out like charcoal. The best thing is to just pull out that basket every few minutes and give it the old eyeball. Oh, yeah, and that's what it looks like in the end. Mmm, crunchy, really good. My husband loves his chicken katsu. He puts a little bit of mustard sauce on it, which is okay to do because we didn't use any sodium, did we? There's a little bit in the panko crumbs, but not much. Do you know what other low potassium vegetable is in season in the fall? Cabbage. So check this dish out. You start with a nice pork tenderloin, trim the fat off, y'all, and cut it up into cubes, or you can use a lean ground pork if you can find it. Cook it in a large Dutch oven, that's just a big old pot, for about eight minutes in oil over medium heat, and make sure you get all the sides. And then you're going to want to add our go-to onion and garlic, and then shredded cabbage into the big pot. Add a little bit more oil or a little bit of unsalted butter, and then you cook, stirring until your arms are about to fall off or until the cabbage is tender, which is about 10 minutes. 
And then you can sprinkle on a little bit of pepper, a tiny bit of salt. How about some quick appetizer ideas? I've got three, starting with zucchini fritters. Shred some of that zucchini medium potassium. You're going to squeeze it to get a little bit of that water out. And then put it in a bowl with eggs, garlic, dill, lemon zest, and pepper. And, you know, whatever. It's up to you. And add a little bit of flour. And then you're going to form it into little patties with clean hands. And then dump it, dip it into a panko breadcrumbs. And you're going to stick it in your air fryer. And then you can use a... Uh, a plain Greek yogurt dip with a little bit of dill, a little bit of lemon juice as your sauce. That looks so good. Another choice is meatballs with cranberry sauce. Make meatballs your way. Avoid the packaged kind unless you are a committed label reader. And if you want to know how to quickly read food labels, check out my video on that to make sure that the uh, pre-processed food that you're getting is going to be okay for you. Bake those meatballs in the oven and coat with a mixture of cranberry sauce and smoky barbecue sauce. Oh, yes. The barbecue sauce is definitely going to be high in sodium. That's why it's just a coating and it's not like a soup of barbecue sauce. And then you can also try the tried and true cream cheese and unsalted crackers. A nurse at my work pours this sweet chili jelly on top of cream cheese and serves it with crackers. And everybody at work goes nuts over it. It looks a lot like this picture over here. And finally, let's talk dessert. Apples are the low potassium star in fall, and a baked apple is a beautiful thing. Most recipes will call for brown sugar, cinnamon, and raisins. Just skip the raisins. Cherry pie is another indulgent option, but I'll be honest, I don't want to make a pie crust. I'd rather make a parfait looking thing using a, a clear glass. And you take some graham cracker, you crumble it up, and you put it at the bottom of the glass. And then you put a little bit of that canned cherry pie filling and top it all off with some Cool Whip. It looks really good. And in fact, you can use those tiny little glass shot glasses to make it even more fancy. And finally, fall would not be complete without pumpkin. Yes, pumpkin is a high potassium food and it should be very limited. But I'm here to tell you the best part of pumpkin flavored things is usually not the pumpkin, it's the pumpkin spice, which contains no pumpkin in it. It can have cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, ginger, anise. I've seen a lot of variations. These spices, you can stick them in coffee, tea, um, hot cocoa. You can put them in cakes or cookies, meringues, you name it. You can get your pumpkin fix on. That's all for this video. If your personal dietary needs are very complicated, maybe you have other conditions besides late stage kidney disease, I highly recommend you consult with your own dietitian who can create a personally tailored meal plan for you. Go to www.eatright.org to find a dietitian near you or one that sees you virtually. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you need more videos like this in your life, subscribe. Check out my other kidney disease diet videos on my YouTube channel, Kidney Cat. Thanks, y'all, and I'll see you next time. Enjoy the fall.